Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do a Python or Anaconda predictor, end-to-end -end project. It's all going to start from the Google Colop or Jupyter if you have pre TensorFlow pre-installed in its virtual environments. Anyways, it'll look just like this when you're done. Let's get started. Okay, so uh, import the data set. Um... After this video, I'm going to make the GitHub public, and I'm going to uh, sh share a link to the data set, or since it's small enough, upload it. Therefore, you guys can do all this yourself. Okay. So, uh, just as usual when we do a convolutional neural network, the image data generator, batch size 4, batch size 2 for the test. And uh, don't forget... Horizontal flip equals true for data augmentation class mode binary. Fit the train in the test. And then now let's get to the CNN. Here's the thing. We're only going to go down to 32, convolution 32 from 28. Because if you go down past that, it's, it, it's not too pretty. And then you do dense one after the flat and then sigmoid because it's binary. You can change this to SGD or something else if you want, but... Loss equals binary cross entropy. Metric equals accuracy. As you know, this is a challenging data set because there's 60 images and 30, and then there's two classes of each, obviously. So, and then uh, dense one at the beginning because it's binary. If you want to change your shape, you have to change your target shape as well up there. But no matter what, you have to have a 3 right there. Okay, fit it at 30 epochs. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh... This is actually good. When you see the E right there, that means it's even further away from uh, zero. So that's actually good for loss. That would not be good for accuracy or validation accuracy. So the metrics look pretty good. I uh, always use max pooling to prevent overfitting. Okay, save the model. Name it whatever you want as H5. And then now we're going to do our prediction. Okay. 384 from the target shape, read the image, reshape the array, predict, prepare the image, and let's score it. 100% chance confident it's an anaconda. 0, 1. Okay. And now 100% chance Python. Now let's go to the GitHub. Okay, uh, here's how it's going to work. You have your model that you saved as an H5 file, right? In your setup as H file, in case you need it, if you want to deploy on another platform. You need this in your requirements text. Although you don't need OpenCV, because I wasn't going to use that to read the image. But you need all of these. Don't do versions, you need the most updated. And then uh, image classificate, you're going to do... Now, if you um, name this something else, or this something else, it's going to work differently. Like, you've got to do streamlit run whatever instead of streamlit run app.py when you're deploying it. Okay, name your title and header, whatever you want. And don't forget, choose an image, and then upload an image, column length equals true, classifying, get, you can write whatever you want for these two things. Label If label 1, remember from the data set, equals 0, it's an anaconda. If not, it's a python. And then don't forget the file path, which is your saved model. Okay, now let's go to the next one, image classification.py. Remember, um, import all of these, teachable machine learning classification. Remember that from the other one, image, weights file, and your weights file, remember? 384, 384, you got to change that as well if you train the convolutional neural network differently. npfloat32, image equals image, 384. Okay, mpargmax, compute the prediction. Okay, and the data, don't forget to put the zero right there, a normalized image array right there. Equals data. Okay. And don't forget the negative one right there. I know that seems unusual, but... 
Okay, and uh, let's go back to the app.py. Okay, um, now remember teachable machine learning classification label. Okay, now uh, let's go to render where we're deploying. Okay, remember, like I told you guys last time, set up your accounts and then uh, sign up for a web service and then sign up for um, Standard Plus because you got a lot of gigabytes. Do not deploy to Heroku. Do not try. The slug size is too big and the build will fail. Okay, and then AWS GCP. You need Docker files, most likely, and it'll be more pricier. Although on GCP you could deploy this in two minutes with Docker, but it's a lot more technical and you need to get into Docker and all that. Okay, um, now uh, name it whatever you want for your name and then the build command. Remember your requirements text. And the start command is run app.py. So if you name uh, the app file differently, you gotta name it up there as well. Okay, now let's go to the application itself. Remember the standard plus? Do that. And then remember, you can cancel any time or you can suspend web services. It's a dollar a day, but if you suspend that day, you're not charged. You're only charged for that day, which means you can stop at any time, or you can just delete the whole service. Okay, now um, here's what the app shows. Remember how uh, Streamlit, we wrote all of that? It predicted an anaconda. An anaconda. Remember? Now I do got to warn you, there might be a little model drift because we're predicting it differently with the mpargmax function. Because CV2 has a different way of uh, working in uh, web apps, meaning it can't always read it as a string, the file image. Therefore, uh, if you want to be creative and go off on your own and implement some of this, but still, don't be surprised if there's model drifts. That's why. There's CICD right here, but that's why there's continuous training as well in machine learning and AI and reinforcement learning, continuous training. This is CICD pipeline right here, but there's continuous training as well. It's often used. That's why people use workflows. And remember, whenever you make a commit right here, it'll automatically redeploy it. Like... Uh, let me show you. I spelt Anna Anaconda predictor wrong, right? Hold on. Predictor. Okay. Now let me commit this file. Now, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me go back to the dashboard. Deploying in progress. You see? You see what I mean by continuous delivery and integration? There you go. Only no continuous training. Although, you can always uh, retrain your web app. I mean, your H5 file and commit it right there. And it will automatically redeploy. I guess you could call that uh, not continuous, but manual training. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned from this video. And remember how easy this thing works. Here, let's try a green tree python. I'll show you what I mean by model drift. I thought it was an anaconda. When, then again, uh, it also... That one was a python. Uh, it uh, looks very python-like. So then again, it is an anaconda looking like python. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys learned from this video. Next time, I know next time we're just going to train a convolutional neural network. I haven't decided what. 
Then after that, we're going to deploy on GCP or AWS using SageMaker. I haven't decided what. And then um, after that, by then I should have more subscribers and come up with something creative for y'all. I hope y'all liked this video. Stay tuned. Be sure to hit like and subscribe.